I have long been a fan of Walter McCrone, the ultimate forensic science before it became popular and the number one show on television. I wanted to do a series for the new explorers on PBS. So I asked Walter, well, what time do you get to work in the morning? He said, 4 a.m. I'm sure he was chuckling to himself. I said, okay, we'll be there uh, when you walk in. Don't go in, because we want to get you going through the door. We showed up at 4 a.m., and so did he. And I think he laughed probably for uh, the rest of his time. Um, we went in, and it was a marvelous segment. We got to know him, and also the subject of light microscopy, to the point where I wanted to take a course myself. That is Walter McCrone, inspiring young people to delve into an invisible, minuscule world. I thought in paying tribute to him, the best thing that we could do was to listen to what he had to say and watch him in action. Knowing that Walter McCrone is over 70 and walks to work in the morning doesn't tell us that much unusual about the man. But knowing it's four o'clock in the morning does. He's a workaholic and will stay here 14 hours a day, seven days a week. Not just because his name is on the door, the McCrone Research Institute, but because he is consumed by a passion. I don't really think of it as work. I can't think of anything that I would rather do than look through the microscope. And I just find and look for things that uh, would be interesting to look for under the microscope. And incidentally, it's nice if I get paid for doing it. That comes close to summing up his personal philosophy. And judging from his office, that need to look for interesting things goes beyond what can fit on a microscope slide. From a collection of African art to last year's bow ties, the debris that accumulates around an inquiring mind. One that's always working, as if afraid there won't be enough time to see everything. His desire to look through a microscope has made him one of the leading microanalysts in the world, with volumes written about what he has seen. And that passion includes this instrument, a simple light microscope relatively low power compared to the advanced devices that can see an atom with two million times our normal vision. Why haven't you gone upscale to the electron? Well, we do use those instruments occasionally, but uh, I think I use it because it's sort of an underdog. Uh, people have assumed that it wouldn't be necessary or even useful anymore because of the big guns. And I'm absolutely convinced that we can't get along without it. If you see a particular substance under the microscope, you're looking at it directly, and it has size, shape, color, and other attributes that not only tell you what it is, but where it came from, when it was made, who made it very often. And this you can't do with any other instrument. Over the years, Dr. McCrone's unconcealed passion for the microscope and his expertise has attracted a worldwide circle of believers. I guess that should include William, the cockatiel who obviously shares a curiosity for looking at interesting things. What'd you say? So much of Dr. McCrone's 14-hour day is spent in the classroom, passing on what he has learned to a new generation. It's real Sherlock Holmesian, uh, same sort of thing. You can learn a lot about people. Uh, I used to give a lecture with a little portable scope on my belt and I would uh, ask someone to volunteer and I'd take a tape from his pants yeah, cuff and uh, analyze it right there before the whole group and, open it up. and I could tell a lot about him uh, about his uh, whether he smoked uh, uh, whether he had pets whether he had I could almost tell his income because of the all of the fibers from the upholstery at home and so on and uh, sometimes some embarrassing things I'd look over the top and make a good story out of it, of course but you can find out an awful lot just looking at tiny little particles under the microscope. What you're doing is magnifying these little particles up to the size that we normally see macroscopic objects. And if we can recognize all of these things here, just at sight, you can do the same thing under the microscope. It's that easy. It's almost getting out of yourself, isn't it, and going into a world that's invisible to yeah. most of us. Some microscopists regard it that way, that they're, they're not enlarging the particle. They're diminishing themselves and they're walking around on the slide looking at the little particles. And your life has been really devoted to sort of learning the territory down right. there. 
Dr. Walter McCrone is a new explorer into the world of the infinitesimal.